it's hard to miss the fact that the United States has a very, shall we say, distinct attitude toward work and play. Messed up might be another way of putting it. It just seems to me that our cultural assumption is that everyone is supposed to be working all the time. Everyone is supposed to be overworked and stressed and striving. And if you ask someone how they're doing, they're kind of supposed to say, oh, you know, really busy. And I wonder where that comes from. It seems to be universally true, whether you're a high paid executive or somebody who's scrambling to put together three jobs or whether you're trying to manage a not for profit or if you're striving for maximum profit all the way around everyone is striving and struggling and working so hard. And you sort of have to wonder why. I mean, I'm as happy as the next person to blame late stage capitalism, but even that has to come from somewhere, from some deep cultural assumption of the way things have to be. And so I wonder what takes us there. And one possible answer, one deeply, deeply rooted story is the Bible, is the story of the very beginning. The creation story in the second chapter of Genesis in the Hebrew Bible talks about God making everything out of the earth, including Adam and making Eve out of Adam's rib. And you know the whole story of the forbidden fruit in the garden that Eve eats of and shares with Adam and everything kind of goes to hell in a handbasket. And the consequence, the punishment that is given for this very first act of disobedience to God is that Adam is given a life of toil, of sweat. No longer will they be able to just wander around doing whatever they please, eating presumably nutritionally complete fruit off of perfect trees. Now Adam is consigned to work by the sweat of his brow, to toil. The Bible says, by the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the dust, since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. That's it. Work all of your born days until you die and return to dirt. Somehow that seems like an attitude that has been promulgated and infiltrated and made its way into a whole understanding of what it means to work, what it means to be a person. But the thing is, that's not the only creation story. There are two creation stories, and Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year is a celebration of the universe's birthday, the world's birthday. It's a birthday that is marked by this first chapter creation story. And the creation story of the first chapter of Genesis is one I'm sure you know, and it has a very different take on what it means to work and to play. In the first chapter of Genesis, God undertakes the work of creation, day by day, separating out the stars and the water and the earth and the air and all of the creeping things until finally God creates humans in God's own image. As a sidelight, I will note that it says, male and female God created them, which I presume to mean that God was male and female to begin with, and probably all of the options in between in creating these beings in God's own image. And so God 
does all of these things and after each day of work, each day of creation, God steps back and says, it's good. It's very good. And then after getting to the end of those six days of creation, God rests, just stops and enjoys the fruits and animals and people of God's labor. And the resting part is just as holy and maybe even more holy than the work part, than the creation part. Now, I know that there are complicated and powerful systems in place that push us into work that is toil, work that is endless. And I know that our society wants so much to judge us by what we are worth, which is to say our income. And even if we aren't judged by our income, we are judged by our productivity and even by our exhaustion. But what if even in bits, even in pieces, even in moments, we found our way into a first chapter creation story of work, a vision of work as creation, of work as something that you can step back and honor as good, and something that you can step back and honor as complete, something that you could just stop doing. In the Jewish tradition, there is the Sabbath, which is the holiest of the Jewish holidays. Not the high holy days, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. The holiest of the Jewish holidays comes every week, and it is the Sabbath, a day of rest, of recreation, which is recreation, recreating ourselves rededicating ourselves to things that are not toil, that are not dust. Taking a breath, enjoying things that renew us. Maybe, just maybe, we could find ways to push back against that dusty creation story and to move ourselves gently in moments into the joy of work as creation, into the joy of rest as recreation, recreation. Pausing to play our way into readiness to create once again.